You all wanted to know what happened to this little car, so that was exactly what happened to it. It was out on a driving lesson. The previous owner of this car, lovely guy, Keithy, reached out to me and said, that's my old car. Rob, I've got the dash cam footage and you're very welcome to use it. he just come past a junction. He said he'd look left. The uh, young lad was driving the car. He carried on uh, driving forward and Keith went to hit the brake and his foot slipped off. So unfortunately, he went straight into that car. You can see from that dash cam footage, they was doing 21 miles an hour. And the chap actually said to me, that was a little bit out, so it was more like 18, 19 miles an hour. And that looks like a lot of damage for a speed of that low, to be honest. But we've been quite anxious to get this one in and actually crack on, get some of this stripped out and have a look how bad it is behind there because we can see, I think it's broken mount. It has broken mount, it's miles out. We said it on the last mm -hmm. video. The engine is quite far back and we noticed quite a substantial amount of oil on the back of my truck and also yeah. a great big bit right on Chris's tarmac, unfortunately. We're going to have to clean up. So we're just going to delve straight in, get this one stripped down and have a look how bad the damage is and hopefully get some bits together for it and get it on the button, get it on its wheels. Well, it is on its wheels, isn't it? But we don't want to be pushing it everywhere. So let's get it up on the ramp, start attacking it and see what we've got. So a lot of mess there, <laughs> a lot of mess fell on the floor. And of course this engine, under engine cover is covered. Everything's on there. There's a fair bit of grease here and you can see all three drive shaft bearings actually landed next to each other, which is incredible. That's spinning around at the time. That's a bit of a badge there, I think. Um, the oil, I mean, it's not really fair to show you this side because there's no damage, so just uh, yeah, there's no damage this side. But going around this side, I've just took the wheel arch liners out. There was like a, a foam cover on here. I've actually removed that. It was quite easy to get off. You can see the fan belts actually snapped. And this pipe, you can see, is all kinked there where the engine's pushed back. And it's got various kinks in it, in it here as well. But the drive shaft, you can actually see, is... Sorry, guys, just trying to get the best position there. The drive shaft there, and you can see that's where the oil's leaking from. Whatever that is there behind the drive shaft, I believe is what's damaged, possibly. We're just going to need to continue stripping out. But this, it really, that engine mount wants releasing up there so that the engine can come forward and give us, excuse me, give us a bit more access. Looks like we're going to need a washer bottle for this one as well. Give us a little bit more access to get to it and have a proper look at it but there is like a little black cover there and i'm hoping that it's a seal in that that it's broke or maybe one of the little covers fingers crossed because we don't want anything major do we so i am just going to continue on stripping it down i didn't want to just leave the time lapse rolling and you guys didn't really know what i was doing so let's concentrate on getting a load of this actually ripped off now So a lot of strip in there, guys, and a lot of mess. A whole heap of mess. And I still haven't got it all off yet. It's just getting really, really late in the day. And we'll probably be calling it until the morning soon. But all of that on the floor, all the broken plastics, aircon pipes. It's going to be a lot of parts on this one. Let's try and prop that torch up there somewhere. 
what I did just do off camera was I've actually removed that engine mount off the side of the engine there just so that Chris can drill out those snapped bolts so the other ends of these that have snapped off and then what we can do is actually it, it does only need this upright section the engine mount itself is fine it's just got broken bolts so we drill them out and then we'll be able to get two new bolts in it just to hold the engine where it should be but you can see where the engine's pushed back it's actually snapped all of this plastic here it snapped it off it should be round this way almost on top of the engine and it has forced it all back so a lot of little broken plastics and pipes and clips and there really is quite a lot there but down the front where we would expect to see the most damage we know it was obviously hit around here it has broke the back off the alternator there just looking there's a couple of broken plugs there um, the alternator itself doesn't look damaged but this back piece here has got a bit of damage on it so we'll have to investigate whether we can get a new back cover for that the, the aircon pump again i'll just pull bits of plastic out of this all day it's never ending just where it's shattered and gone everywhere so the aircon pump itself actually looks okay it's missed that one but it has actually broke that and we was talking about that on the little volkswagen polo wasn't we that they normally break so that's broke and then you can see the oil cooler there i'm assuming that's the oil cooler calling it oil cooler oil cooler or water cooler even is actually got a hole in it so that's knackered it's missed all the gearbox side of things you can just see there's broken pipes broken plastic broken wires literally everywhere on it so it's going to be a fair bit of money in parts i think there's a sensor broken there but it doesn't look like it's actually broke the inlet manifold although there is a couple of little scuffs on it here and now we're not going to know properly till we get it up in the air guess first of all let's get that engine mount on it and get it safe so that we can actually get underneath it because at the minute i've just got the jack but after removing all of the damage chassis leg perfect chassis leg perfect and if you actually look at that frame on the bottom that is purely a radiator support there the front panel and the uprights actually bolted into it just here so they come up here and they was part of that aluminium frame but that itself is not damaged and you can see that looks like it's supposed to be there there's no kink at the back and it's dead flat at the bottom so maybe that is supposed to be there maybe not we'll look into that but the damage was definitely concentrated on this area here and it looks completely different now it's stripped out it just it does always make a difference we have got to investigate that drive shaft and that is where the oil leak is behind that drive shaft so we'll be back in the morning So we've got two bolts broken off in this mini engine mount bracket. Um, so I've already just drilled that one and I'm gonna carry on and drill this one. Now the reason I'm drilling them from this side is because that's got a nice flat machined on there. 
which is going to sit really nice on the pillar drill and there's more chance of keeping it central then trying to drill it that way up it could be a bit of a lottery if you kept it on centre so let's see how it goes And there we go, pretty much bang on central. So I shall now step the drill up a little bit, go a little bit larger, and um, just the process of drilling them out. And uh, once, once, I, once I get most of it out, I'll, uh, I'll run a tap through it, and that'll be good to go. We got Chris back with us today. Yeah. He is peeling off them stickers, and that is torture, mate, right? It's been- I'd rather be drilling out in broken bolts. Really? Yeah. It is just where it's, it's do a bit of a demo actually, where it's been on there so long, as soon as you pull it, it's all just falling to bits, isn't it? Yeah. You've got quite a lot of people worried about that thumb, Chris. Yes. I was all wondering whether you poked me in the eye with it. No, no, put it where I shouldn't have put it. You hit it with a hammer, didn't you? No, no, dig a bucket. Dig a bucket, that's it. Right, so, we got stripping on the back here, and there is a lot of broken plastic i mean a lot of broken plastic you can see all of this has snapped out it has just tapped it here so we are all right none of these pipes are damaged although the other end of them is isn't it so they've all got to come out anyway we've now got the engine bolted back in we've got two bolts holding it it's on its mount it's not going anywhere chris has saved the actual engine mount side of it but the uh, he's drilled the bolts out and we're just using this one temporarily. So you can see it is all broken anyway, but we're using that temporarily. So looking down the back now, actually doesn't look that bad. You've got a kink here on the Lambda sensor that's crushed a little bit, easy fixable. But looking at that actuator there, you can see it's all snapped out of its housing. And we're not, you can, there's all bits of plastic in there as well, you can see. We're still not sure about that oil leak. We are going to get it up in the air, but there's so much broken stuff. All of these little brackets are uh, broken. Only concentrated on this side. And then fuel line. That's actually snapped there. The other half of it's here somewhere. And then down the front, it just gets worse and worse. I know I pointed out the alternator and the air comp pump. But I've just noticed that in there as well is all snapped. But we think we just got lucky, Chris, don't we? So friends of ours over at Sheppy Salvage, he actually bought one of these for his missus and repaired it. And he bought a breaker to repair that car with. And I just rang him up and said, have you got any bits? He said, Rob, I only use the bonnet, front panel rads and the bumper. I've got all of this. I've got a turbo, I've got all of this plastic, I've got lots and lots of stuff. Pop over. So we're probably just going to sit here now, make a bit of a list of what we can see, which is probably everything on the front of that engine, isn't it? Yeah. And the turbo on the back, he's got the engine mount. Let's just go over there and actually get all of the bits he has got and get all of this swap round. He's even got, did he say the drive shaft? The drive shaft. Yeah. Which is going to make life so much easier. Well. He has got headlight panels, but <laughs> no, we had I'll be honest, I didn't know that the headlight panels were separate to the front panel, Chris, because oh. it was so crushed in there. Anyway, let's go and get what he's got and hopefully get all of these broken bits replaced. He did, normally they don't sell bits off of engines, but he said, where it's so new, it's not popular yet. It's a 19. It, it's a 19, so he'll just sell the engine block. He's prepared to sell us all of this stuff, which is fantastic, because me and Chris was actually thinking about going down the route of asking him to bid on a breaker so that we could buy the front end off of him, because all of that would add up to so much money. Anyway, let's crack on, get that list done, get over there and buy what he's got. Guys, how lucky is this? 
it's in the same colour. I might even buy the wing and the door so they ain't got to have no paint work there. But we'll see how Chris gets on with that repair on the front edge. But engine mount, already unbolted. All of the plastics there, none of it's broken. Even that tray there we need, and that's not broken. All these little alley bits, I'm not even going to bother with them because we need the complete thing. There's no point just buying half of it. But let's get all of this off. I've borrowed a little set off of him. Get everything off we need. And do you know what? I'm going to... Ah, there's the fuel pipe we need as well. And let's have the aircon pipes off it as well while we're here. I think we're going to do all right here. We're going to do all right. I know it doesn't look like a lot in the back of the truck, but I assure you there's quite a lot in there. So that last little piece of plastic I said was broke, including the cover, new alternator, aircon pump, washer bottle, bonnet hinges, battery tray, the back underside of the scuttle panel, both parts, aircon pipes, headlight panels, landing panel, new turbo, brake boost pipe. We've got it all in there, and he's going to whip off the um, auto water oil water cooler and the engine loom off of the engine and i'm going to pop back for it later on this afternoon because they're a little bit busy here but of course done us a cracking deal on all of this stuff as well which has really really saved us someone's been a busy boy while i've been gone yeah look at that how different does that car look with all of those stickers off don't worry keith we're not saying it looked bad before we know you was a driving school but mate you made a lovely job of that have you been round and wiped the whole car over? Yeah, well, sort of fashion, yeah. It's, it's, it's really. nice. I don't know if you've ever actually noticed this, but I mentioned it years ago to my brother about his wife. She started a little business, and because she was using her family car, she had magnetic stickers. Do you know it? I said, oh, they ruined the paint. They pull all the pigment out of the paint. And she went, oh, no, they're all right. And when I pulled it back, it had a great big light patch underneath it where the magnet really? i don't know how it works but no. magnets do ruin your paint i've seen it a few times and even down at uh, kent auto salvage there was a learner car in there once and you could see clearly where they'd pulled off their magnetic strips it yeah. ruins yeah. the paint so chris has done all that we got so lucky with all those bits didn't we chris yeah. What Matt did say to me over there, and to be fair, I know we get looked after, and I know ultimately if you had to buy all them bits, it just wouldn't add up. It would be so expensive to get those parts. But he said, Rob, as a rule, normally, all this plastic round here, behind here, you just wouldn't sell it. And you wouldn't really on any breaker, would you? Unless it's had this sort of impact. Sure. Broke amount. He said, this here I'm not going to sell. The battery tray, we can see where our airbox sits in, one is broken there. And he was like, yeah, just have it. He actually give it, he give us oh, most nice, of that yeah. stuff. Nice. The expensive stuff, he said, I'll tell you what I'll do. The turbo, the drive shaft, alternator and the aircon pump have all got a reasonable value. Yeah. How about, he said, what, what are you thinking price-wise? And I gave him my price. And... We used to play on a bit of a game where I'd write it on one side of the car, he'd write it on the other side. But we wasn't far apart. We was 100 quid apart. And you know exactly where I'm going with this. We met in the middle. So we just, I just got back. I've had a quick, quick chat with Chris and we've eaten lunch. And what we've actually decided is there's only one correct way to repair that now, isn't there? Yeah. Because there is so much damage behind there, albeit light, we don't know what else is broken on the back of that engine we know there's an oil leak down there and that's why i pulled the plug and bought a turbo so what we've actually decided to do is once that battery tray's out it's got to come out anyway you've got a gearbox mount back mount only one drive shaft we're just going to pull that engine out aren't we it just makes sense we get that engine out here on the floor don't know what way round we're going to do it but chris may fit a load of them bits and i can crack on and get all of that bulkhead fitted right. back up. And we can put it straight back we in. We can plonk it back in. Not only can we plonk it back in, if this will run without an intercooler, we can probably run that engine up in the next video. Fingers crossed. So I know it seems like we've got quite a few bits 
in bits at the moment, but that is the way it goes. While you're waiting for bits for one, you can get on with another. I know we played those last two videos back to back, and there's a good job this one might even work out that way. We're just not quite sure. It depends on how hard it is getting the engine out and getting all the bits swapped over, of course, getting it turned around. You would have heard me mention there that I'm going back for that water cooler, water to oil cooler there, and also the wiring loom. Now, we don't plan on actually changing the wiring loom. It was just a couple of plugs. But if we get the engine out and that wiring loom's got exactly the same part numbers on it, we'd just swap it while the engine's out. It'll just make sense and, of course, make a lovely job. Chris would make a nice job of repairing them, putting the new plugs on, etc., etc. anyway. But, guys, that is going to be the end of part two. Yeah, part two on the little 2020 Mini Cooper. Still quite a few bits to source. I'm trying to find a front front panel complete with rad packs in it. In an ideal world, I think that's gonna be best for it. We've located a bonnet, located a bumper, just a few other little bits and pieces. Sometimes you don't get to know what you need till you get to that stage in the build where you think, right, I'm gonna need one of those as well. Anyway, enough waffle. That is the end of today's video. As usual, if you did enjoy it, hit that thumbs up, drop us a comment in the comment section, like, subscribe and share, and don't forget to follow us on Instagram for the little sneak peeks at Salvage Rebuilds. Guys, if you do reach out with your cars for sale on Instagram or, or you re reaching out on there in general, please include your contact number. We'll see you all very, very soon in the next one.